Alright, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo IdeaPad Model 5-15iil05. Alright, so let's go ahead and remove the screws from the bottom here. So we're going to use a T5 or a Torx 5 screwdriver. Not sure why my um, Google thing started restarting itself. Anyways, um, you want to keep all the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like this in the pattern I remove them. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. All right, so there's three back here, two here, and then four more on the front. If my video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. I might have to pause the video for a bit so that I can fix my display because right now I can't see what I'm recording. I don't know why I'm using like a uh, Google um, Chromecast thing to mirror my display and then I guess maybe it updated itself. All right, so we got all these screws out. Let me go ahead and set that back up and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. We got all the screws out. <clears throat> Let's go ahead now and pop this cover off. So this one was having a... Oops, we don't want to actually turn it on right now. So this was having a cracked hinge earlier. Let me shut this down. I don't know why it turned itself on. All right, and then what we're going to do to open this up, I'm going to get my fingernails in the gap here. And then what I'm going to do is push on the back of the palm rest. You don't want to push on the trackpad itself, just the palm rest area. And then you can go ahead and pop the clips out just like that, as you can see. All right, you want to be careful with the palm rest. Again, you don't want to push on that. All right, so here you can see we're popping this all out. Okay. Now let's go ahead and close this up and let's go ahead and work on the sides now. Now that we got the front open, I don't know if you want to see that, but here you can see we got the front open here. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to slide my fingernail along the sides while I kind of pull up, okay, just like this. Then we're going to work our way up here, same thing, pushing down uh, with my thumb and pulling up with my fingers here, like this. All right, we're going to go over to this side and continue doing the same thing. All right. All right. See, it's popping out relatively easy. Okay. Okay, now that we got all of that out, we also got this one out. Let's see if we can actually pop this side on that one. Oh, it's already popped out. All right, the center piece, sometimes it's more difficult. You might have to just grab this cover and kind of just wiggle it as you kind of lift and pull. All right, so there we go. And now we got the bottom cover off. Um, good thing we opened this up because it is pretty dusty inside. You can see, I don't know if you can see all that dust in there. <clears throat> all right, this is just going to be a quick look inside. I'm not going to be taking everything out. Okay, so I don't know where they're hiding the... Oh, sorry, I'm blind. Okay, so there's a um, 2.5 inch SATA hard drive slot here. Um, I don't know if it comes with the four screws that are supposed to hold it in place. Let's actually take that out. We're going to use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. <clears throat> Normally, I don't pop all these extra pieces out. If I don't need to for the repair, this one, we already actually repaired it because the hinge was just broken. Okay, but let's go ahead and take these screws out and then take a look. Okay, now that we got those two screws. Oh, they also hide two screws underneath the um, battery apparently. So if you need to take this out, you do have to take the battery out. And I'm not seeing the screws for the hard drive. I'm going to leave it in there. I'm not seeing the screws to hold the um, 2.5 inch hard drive in place. So <clears throat> if you get a two and a half inch SATA hard drive, uh, keep in mind that you're probably going to need screws to hold it into this um, hard drive caddy or bracket. Okay. The battery, um, this cable's pretty short, so you have to take all the screws out, and then you can lift the battery up slightly and kind of just wiggle the connector back as you're pulling the battery as well. Um, battery model number is right here, all right, L19C3PF4. You got the keyboard connector here. Um, 
JTP, so that's touchpad connector. You got the keyboard backlight connector here and JFP, so fingerprint connector here. And then this um, slot here is for the hard drive connector. You can actually see the hard drive cables under there. Or maybe that's the fingerprint. Is that the fingerprint cable? Um, where is the fingerprint sensor in here? Hmm, I'm confused now. Um, okay, so I don't know because they say JFP and usually that's a fingerprint sensor. Um, okay, I see the cable. It's running all the way up to here. So I guess the fingerprint sensor is integrated into the power button. Okay. Oh, this laptop likes to turn itself on when you open it up. Um, if I didn't mention already, there's the BIOS CMOS RTC real-time clock battery here. Okay. You have this whole USB port, SD card slot, and the um, activity light, uh, power button activity, power activity light, as well as the one key recovery hole here. So this hole, um, you can actually use a needle or a pin to press on it while the computer is off, and it will act as a boot, uh, boot menu. To You can use it to start Windows normally if the power button's broken. You can also use it to enter recovery mode or change the boot devices or go into the BIOS. All right, anyways, that's that. All right, you got the fan there. There's three screws holding it as far as I can see. Here you can see there's a bunch of dust I'm gonna have to clean out. You got this connector for the fan here. You got an M.2 uh, PCIe NVMe SSD, but they use like one of these small ones. You can use a full-sized one. You just, you'll just you just have to take this metal bracket out and just use the one screw by itself. Wireless card is here, two wireless antennas. CPU is soldered to the motherboard. RAM, I believe, is also soldered to the motherboard underneath this metal thing, so you can't upgrade RAM. Okay, then you got this speaker connector here, which connects this speaker bar. You got the um, LCD LVDS uh, connector here. If you're going to mess with this, make sure to disconnect the computer, then open up the screen, press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds to drain any residual power, and then you can go ahead and disconnect this. If you don't do that, you can burn either the cable, some circuitry on here for the screen or you can even destroy the screen all right then you got this cable here usually it's for like the cameras and the microphones um but yeah i don't know it says jts so maybe this is the touchscreen connector all right um and that's pretty much all there is i'm gonna take this out clean out the dust and then we'll just put the cover back on and put it back together and that's pretty much it all right i'll see you guys in a bit let me actually put this here as a thumbnail Okay. All right. So I'll clean it up and I'll see you guys in a bit. <clears throat> All right. So we cleaned it up. All right. You can see it's a lot cleaner inside, a lot less dust. This is the fan is way cleaner. It's pretty much changed colors. Um, I'm going to see if I can take the fan out easily because I do feel like there's some dust still stuck in there and there are only three screws. So let's go ahead and see. Hopefully I won't have to get the wires out because the wires are kind of all um, tucked in there. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. Okay, so we can lift this up slightly and I can actually see the dust in there. So I can actually pull that out. I'm going to use some needle nose pliers and hopefully I can reach that. There we go. Okay, so now we got the big ball of dust out and that's after I used the electric air blower. So there was actually a lot more dust in there, but um, I got most of it all out earlier with the electric air blower, so I think we should be good to go. Okay. All right, so that's good. We're just going to go ahead and put this thing back together now. Let's go ahead and get the fan screws back in. All right, luckily I opened this up because originally I wasn't even going to um, open this thing up because I didn't have to open it to repair the hinge, but... uh. I figured might as well. All right, and yeah, this thing was pretty dusty in there. All right, the other thing I'm gonna check because the hinges broke is the hinge screws on the inside here, because if those come loose, that can also cause damage to the hinges um, because it and then gets more, um, what do you call, more torque to, to rip these screws out. And these screws actually are pretty tight, so I think I'm gonna leave them be. All right, so that's good. Okay, so let's go ahead now and get the bottom cover back on. Um, if you do want to see how I repaired the hinge, I uploaded an, a video of that 
yesterday. So let's go ahead and basically just snap everything back together. Okay, just clip it all down. There we go. And get all the T5 or Torx 5 screws back in. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money. Yeah, and please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, if there was anything in here that you were kind of looking at and couldn't figure out how to remove it, again, I have a lot of videos showing how to open up these types of computers and um, they're basically the same thing so all the SSDs come out the same way one screw it pops up slightly at an angle and then you pull it out basically like RAM um, the RAM will usually have little clips this one you can't upgrade the RAM alright unless uh, I'm missing something because I didn't take the motherboard out sometimes they hide stuff underneath the motherboard but um, usually if you don't know um, then it's not going to be worth getting to the other side of the motherboard um, usually what I do to check the other side of the motherboard is I would search the model number of the laptop and then look for motherboards online and I can actually find pictures um, where people are selling the motherboards and then you can actually look at both sides to see if there's anything upgradable there. But um, this one looked like it's kind of flush to the keyboard so I'm kind of doubting there's anything there. Alright, so that's pretty much it. Yeah, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this spike.